Welcome back to another episode, everyone. Uh, today we're doing another episode of Mainstream Wrestling. Uh, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Corey. Good day, everybody. How's it going today? I am doing great. Um, enjoying life. Well, that's good. Uh, I wish I could say the same. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to be uh, missing something. Uh, yeah, I... Uh... I got my fiance to shave the sides of my head like I usually do. And I was like, oh, I'm going to trim my beard a little bit. But uh, I got this new shaver. And my old shaver, it was like a one inch. So it left it like, you know, an inch long. And this one I didn't realize, but it's like half an inch that it leaves it instead. So, like, I started shaving and I'm like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, ah, fuck. And I was like, I can't stop now. (laughs) So, yeah, Uh... it's a lot shorter than what I wanted. But it, at least it looks a little cleaner. Yeah. Um, I noticed that yesterday with our latest interview, no spoilers. Uh, but, like, mid-conversation, I'm like, dude, you shave? Yeah. Oh, yeah, my beard, like, was, like, this long if I, like, actually, you know, straightened it out or whatever. Yeah. But Yeah, you've been growing that thing for a while. Yeah, the last time I trimmed like that would have been... 2021 a funny story i was gonna trim one day and this was during work so i was at my mom's and i'm at my mom's most of the times anyway now but she i had this like shaver thing that had these like different like size adjusters whatever and i usually had the big one that leaves it like thicker Mm mm-hmm And without telling me, she changed it. To this day, I say she did it on purpose, but it basically (laughs) shaved everything. And, like, everything noticed because I'm a pretty fucking ugly man, and I'm even worse without facial hair. So (laughs) people noticed. Yeah. Like, still to this day, Rosanna has not seen me without a beard at all. Yeah. And we've been together going on eight years. The last time I remember seeing you without a beard is those old Grand Prix shows that we went to where you yep. you had a picture with Sonata and all that, and you're, like, clean-shaven. I clean-shaved back then because I was at the shop and I didn't want to wear a beard net. Mm-hmm. I feel naked working without a beard net. I've tried it, and my face gets cold, and I never get cold. You know me, I don't get cold. And I just felt naked without the beard net. Yeah. So, uh, let's get into some news. I did my notes the wrong way, so my news is actually at the end of my notes instead of the (laughs) beginning like usual. Um, So, first little bit of news here. uh, Triple H is being cast as Kratos in a uh, God of War movie. uh, Starting a film at the end of this year. Oh, yeah, he totally fits the Kratos character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, God of War is in a series that... It's not a series that I didn't play. I have the trilogy on PS3. Uh, the TV you see right here, that's my PS3 TV. So when I'm not busy, I just turn my chair around. I can play PS3 there. I can play PS4 there. I got a bunch of consoles. I got a war great series. Um, I haven't played the the last few games or last game, the fourth one. But uh, yeah, congrats on Triple H for that. Uh, next up. Yotatsuji wins the New Japan Cup and will face Naito on April 6th, which is first day, the same day as the first night of WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, they gotta make new stars. Yeah. Uh, Yotatsuji also said that if he didn't say if, he said when he wins the title, he wants to bring back the V4. The Okada, the yeah. Tanahashi, Nakamura belt, AJ Styles as well. Um, Suji ain't winning the belt. Um, I think Naito, that's a title defense. Yeah. Uh, I'm sticking to my guns here, and I'm saying that Naito drops the belt to Moxley. Yeah, it's uh, very possible. Uh, Moxley being Moxley, right? He's put in the work. Uh, he's just asked for time off from AEW, so it would give him time to 
defend the belt a few times here in Japan, well, in Japan and in the States, depending on what shows he's going to be on. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be a long-term thing. But when you look at professional wrestling right now, like in 2024, the IWGP World Heavyweight title is up there as titles that you'd love to have on your resume. The WWE title, I think, is still the most prestigious belt. AEW World title, that's pretty pretty prestigious. You know, it's on TNT or for us it's on TSN. Uh, The IWGP World Heavyweight title for a Japanese belt, that's a huge belt. And for Moxley to have it and to bring that on Dynamite and all that, um, we've complained about how how many there's too many belts on AEW. Uh, This one you make an exception for. For sure. Um, next up, uh, there's backstage, uh, in AW and Ring of Honor, um, Mercedes money is getting a lot of heat because of the amount of money she's getting paid. And it's come out that the other women, uh, aren't even getting paid 10% of what she's making. You know, with this one... Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, is one of the big, biggest women stars in wrestling. If she made that money, that's not a her problem. That's a Tony Khan problem. It you is. know, she got the money. Um, you're jealous that you're not making that money. You're not that. You're not Mercedes Monet over. All right. She built up her fucking career. Um, she's making more. It is what it is. You know, she's worth every penny. Um, well, it's yet to be seen. Let's see what she can do. She hasn't wrestled yet. She's had a couple promos, and both promos were pretty much the same. So let's see yeah. when she gets into the ring. But for right now, it's a huge coup for AEW. And she well, it is it. because uh, her debut episode, they reached a million mm-hmm. viewers or whatever. So, um, we also don't know how much she's getting paid. So that's another thing. And it's one of these things where I don't care. It's not a hockey team, you know, or it's like it, it, what she makes doesn't affect my enjoyment of watching AEW. Now, yeah, let's either. say, let's say Montreal Canadiens sign a player to a $15 million contract. Well, that's different. For my team, there's a cap limit, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, for the Senators, it's the same thing. You know, if I was a Maple Leafs fan, I'd be miserable right now when you got more than half of your cap on four players. Yeah, that's uh, that's but, rough. But that's for hockey. You know, as far as wrestling goes, you know, if you're not happy in AEW, you know, take a chance on yourself elsewhere. That's what Sasha Banks did, Mercedes Monet. You know, to me, it's a non-story. Because Tony Khan paid her what he felt she was worth. And if it's three or four times more than what the other girls make, that's not on Mercedes. That's on Tony. No, and another another reason why she has heat is because um, in an interview or whatever, she basically said she's only in AW for a short while because she wants to go back to WWE. Yeah. And I think that, that's another meet reason why the women are like pissed off. See... That's a good reason to be pissed off about because, oh, you're you're just a stop. You know, you're like a pit stop on the way to the bigger show. Um, AEW's been really good lately. Did you see that picture of AEW? We push younger talent, and it's like oh, yeah. Adam yeah. Copeland, TNT champion, 50-whatever. <laughs> And like the last one is like Billy Gunn, sixty years old. It's like yeah, we're pushing the old, the the young guys for sure. Um, but you can't deny that they have the star power. You know, it adds value to whatever belt you have. You can't forget that. Okay, Billy Gunn's a champion. His two partners are in their mid twenties. Yeah, you know? yeah, and they're still Orange Cassidy is champion. They're still no, he lost the, the belt. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I forgot Roderick about that. Strong is in his, I think he's like 47 or something like that. Uh, there's still uh, Hook as the FT, FTW champion. 
Mm-hmm. Something comparatively to AEW is... I'll compare it to UCW, where UCW says they're pushing young talent, and look at all the champions right now in UCW. UCW all under 25. Only, exactly. Um, Hollywood Cole, uh, Ethan Knight, the Hollywood Heathens, they're the world and secondary, respectively. And then Rad, Rudy Lockhart, and Dayton Cameron, they're the tag team champions. Um, UCW, there's something about UCW that they just do it right. It reminds me of the Nova Scotia North Pro, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, so it's come out that uh, Tony Khan has set the rules for the Continental title and how it will de- be defended. Uh, there's to be no interference in the matches. And whoever is the champion by, I don't remember the pay-per-view names, but when the tournament starts, they have to defend the title in the tournament so they will be involved in the tournament. And they could be eliminated at any point in the tournament, and then a new champion could be completely crowned. Yeah. Um, I think they gimmicked the belt too much. I don't think it's a belt that's needed. If you if you look at it, the Continental Crown is your third secondary belt. Yep. And to me, that's just way, way, way too many belts. Um you know, I used to say an international title is just another fancy word for world title. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, an international belt can be defended in wa- in the ocean or something. But, uh, <laughs> you know, international title, TNT title, now the Continental Crown. Um, you know, I'd unify the international and the TNT belt at least uh, because – those serve the same purpose. It's just a secondary belt. The Continental Crown, they gimmicked it as a G1 Climax style tournament that ends with you winning the belt. I, I feel this gimmick is just not going to work. It, it, the, there's too many moving parts. It's too complicated. It reminds me of the original IWGP heavyweight title. Yeah, the original... IWGP heavyweight title was a championship belt that you won in the International Wrestling Grand Prix, a tournament. Guess who the first champion won was the that won that belt? Yeah, it, was, it was me. <laughs> a full seven years before he's born, uh, yep. Hulk Hogan is the the first man to be an IWGP champion. Is Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Um. But yeah, let's. Uh, our, our next little piece of news here is uh, the Lucha Bros. So Pentagon and Ray Phoenix are having a pay per view June first, twenty twenty four, or a show. It's called Hit the Lights, and it's going to be at the temple where Lucha Underground was filmed in Boyle Heights, uh, California. Uh, I miss Lucha Underground. I thought Lucha Underground was a fantastic show. Hi, Lexi. <laughs> yeah, that must be Amazon or the Mail that's here now. But, uh, yeah, no, if, if they do Lucha Underground style, that'd be cool. Yeah, uh, I have, that's the only thing that I've seen that was announced. Uh, it had two of them on the poster, and it had the the view of, like, the temple. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, next piece of news, uh, Maurice is now tumor-free after going through surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that. Um, never want to hear that a performer is sick. Um, man, they caught it quick. They got rid of it. She's fine. Uh, enjoy your family and rock on. Yep, exactly. Uh, something you sent me is the Slammy Awards return for WWE. Around WrestleMania weekend, I think. Um, you can go on, I believe it's WWE.com, and you can vote the categories there. It's basically the fans a Slammy Award, and it's from, I believe, March to, or April to March 2024. Like, it's not 2023, it's from, like, WrestleMania time to WrestleMania time. So you got, got like, I think there's only, like, four, five, six categories uh, out yet, male superstar, female superstar, I think there's, like, entrance of the year, 
uh, OMG moment of the year. Uh, I haven't voted. Don't know if I'm going to vote because every time I think about it, I'm doing something. So, and I have a bad, <laughs> I have a bad way of forgetting things. So, uh, next piece of news is something I did didn't mention to you yesterday when we were talking about notes. Um, the whole Booker T versus CM Punk thing. Uh, Booker T came out and did a, an interview or whatever and said that. Oh yeah, no, I was just in character. I I didn't mean any of what I said. He's like, I'm just playing off my character. You know, it's funny because we shouldn't have to like pick like, oh, who's your favorite black wrestler? But everybody tends to, oh, here's my favorite Japanese. Here's my favorite black. So if I have to follow that trend, if I have a favorite black wrestler of all time, it's Booker T. Booker T was worth his weight in gold in WCW. Um, finally got to reach the big one in WWE in the year 2002-2003. Booker T was so good, so over. Worked his way from being a WCW guy to being one of the top guys in WWE. Um, I don't know, one of my favorites, Harlem Heat, was a great tag team. Booker T as TV champion in WCW was amazing. And a six-time world champion, so I like Booker T. I do too. Uh, so next up, uh, there's it's been announced that five people are leaving Stardom at the end of this month, or sometime within the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, J- Julia's leaving. Mirai's leaving. May Sakura's leaving. Yuzuki's leaving, and Yutami. You hold on, Yutami Hoya Shishita. Yeah, uh, it's like I said last time, though. I think Julia's leaving with Rossi Ogawa, but I don't think she stays there too long. I I think she's WWE bound. That's where these five uh, women are going. They're going to go join Rossi, uh, Rossi Ogawa's promotion, yeah. uh, help get it started off. Uh, what did they do after that? I have no idea. I think Julia goes to WWE. I think... They try to build a new star with one of the the other four. Um, I think they're gonna try to pad the the promotion with other. I think I, I'm sure Rossi Ogawa is gonna have like freelance women that are gonna come in, and you know probably some foreign talent and all that. Um, it, it it's interesting and it's exciting, but how long before the first show? Uh, I have no idea, but the most interesting to me thing to me that could happen is have Ogawa and WWE partner up. Yeah, the feeder system. Um, I- I'd be okay with that, really. No, but e- even like WWE sending off their talent for a few shows there. Yeah. Same thing. Ogawa sends. Then they don't have to like. Julia doesn't ha- necessarily have to just be with o- Ogawa. Yeah. She can move on to WWE, do some stuff there, and. Yeah, I think Julia is one of these, like, she's right there. She's on the cusp of superstardom, no pun intended. Um, I I think her in WWE, like, you could see her in a match at WrestleMania with Charlotte. You could. She's that good. Um, It's the post-Vince McMahon WWE, so they'd give them time. So... I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, it's a story I'm keeping my eyes on. And then that's my notes. I know you have more notes for news that I don't have. So <laughs> go ahead. Buckle up. Um, so Bullet Club War Dogs member Alex Coglin has announced his retirement after he suffered a career-ending injury in the cage match between Bullet Club and the United Empire. Um, In wrestling, never say never, but he seemed pretty damn salty online with it. Like... I would be too, though. Like... Again, never say never. Look at Brian, look at Edge. Exactly. Look at Christian. His tweet made me laugh. He's like... I got... It's like something like, I got injured really bad... I'm retired. Fuck off. And then he like dot dot dot. Wait a minute. I got some merch to sell. Don't fuck off just yet. 
<laughs> yeah. That so, was, yeah, that's that was funny. Yeah. Uh, next up, Goldberg comments about Triple H and Asuka. Uh, Goldberg uh, might have headbutted too many doors. I think he might be suffering from CT. He is convinced that Triple H sabotaged his undefeated streak by his words, not mine, giving the streak to some Japanese girl called Asuka. Um, I, uh, I've never liked Goldberg. Um, me neither. Um, and people are always shocked because we know who my all-time favorite wrestler is. But, you know, my all-time favorite wrestler could actually work. All right. Goldberg is – you got to admire what he accomplished in WCW. But it's – I don't know. Goldberg, he's he's bitter that he, that he didn't get his retirement match. Saying WWE didn't treat him right. Goldberg got the easiest job in the world, being paid millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I think his la- I think like 75% of his last matches were for a title, a world title, by the way. Uh, I'll never forgive him for squashing The Fiend. Me neither. Um, Should have retired that WrestleMania with Brock Lesnar when they went four minutes, but it was four of the best minutes Goldberg's ever had because... But at the same time, they started using that as a template for Brock Lesnar matches and just got boring after a while. But just, you know, it, it reminded me of a, a video game where, remember the old SmackDown games where mm-hmm. you could, like, put finishing moves and you could put up to, like, five? And you just spam the finishing moves uh, right at the beginning. It reminded me of that. Um, that's probably my favorite Goldberg match, to be honest, against Brock Lesnar at that one WrestleMania. But... um I don't know. Goldberg saying that about Asuka pisses me off because Asuka is one of those female talents that made female wrestling enjoyable. It was it was post diva era. Asuka is a first ballot Hall of Famer in my opinion. Now Goldberg is too. He went to the Hall of Fame. Um, you can't deny the talent that Goldberg had. But to criticize Asuka and to say that he hates Triple H because he knows it's because of Triple H that they took the undefeated streak. Goldberg was 173-0, and right? No. No, WCW no, added the stat every week. And yeah. fans caught on to it. You know, I know you're not a big Kevin Nash fan, but when Kevin Nash tells the story of every week, it gets bigger and bigger. You hear the Goldberg sucks chants. He's not lying. You know, wrestling fans get bored of the same thing. And Goldberg just, I don't know, just... Anyway, let's move on from Goldberg. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns are leaving TNA. They had a big show, and um, I think it was a house show or something like that, and uh, in the back, in the locker room, um, basically they had a going-away party for the guns, so... Um, They're also looking, trying to get uh, Motor City Machine Guns trademarked right now. Uh, Alex Shelley, I think, has. Okay. I think he has. I, I, I know they were. I know they were in the process of trying to get it done. Yeah. But I think he he um he like he applied for it. Okay. Uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling's Champions Carnival starts on April 18th. The Champions Carnival is basically All Japan Pro Wrestling's uh, G1 Climax. It was their big big tournament every year for the singles wrestlers um so that starts on april 18th uh ronda rousey i think this is i got two pieces of news ronda rousey's new book is not kind to vince mcmahon john laurinaitis and bruce pritchard and uh i'm i've never been a ronda rousey fan i find her annoying and complaining and all that uh, this might win me over with her. I I find a lot of the stuff like obviously I haven't read the book, so I don't know everything she said. The book's not out but yet. Ronda was given the world in WWE, absolutely. And for her to for her to shit on them, saying that women obviously women don't have enough time in matches. That's something I'll agree on. Yeah, but she was given everything. That's it's the Goldberg syndrome. Uh, same same fucking premise because you're 100% right. The thing is, 
Ronda Rousey in 2016 is the most popular athlete in the world, in the UFC. She's breaking fucking pay-per-view numbers. She's the biggest thing in the world. It got to her head. Holly Holmes knocked her the fuck out. And she never recovered from that. She tried to fight Amanda Nunes. Nunes beat her even worse. It was like 40-something yep. seconds. I remember watching a stream, and my roommate at the time, Simon, he's in his room, and the stream is like a minute ahead of mine. And all I'm hearing is, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then he comes out, and the, my match hasn't even started yet. And he's like, dude, what the – I'm like, I don't know what you're – it's not even on yet. And then 40 seconds later, Ron does a bloody mess and just got knocked out. Um they did a female an all female pay per view because Ronda was in the main event. They got the WrestleMania main event because Ronda's there. So you know, star power is a thing. It is, uh, and you have to give it to Ronda for that because Charlotte and Becky, you know, that year's WrestleMania. If Ronda's not there, the main event is Brock and Seth. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, the fact that she attacks Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Bruce Prichard, she doesn't attack the company. She attacks these three. The fact she attacked Bruce Pritchard uh, put a big fucking smile on my face because that is the biggest uh, ass kisser for Vince McMahon. That that's that's Vince McMahon's avatar. Yep. If Bruce, this is one of the quotes from the book. If Bruce is still there, Vince is still there because he is the words coming out of Bruce's mouth is Vince McMahon. So I never liked Bruce Pritchard's. I think he's a lying scumbag. Uh, John Laurinaitis, same thing. Vince McMahon shaped our childhood, obviously, but he's a fucking piece of shit too because of everything that's come out. But Bruce Pritchard, if you don't know who he is, he played Brother Love. And uh, just never been a fan of Bruce Pritchard. Um, just, he's a corporate yes man. So enough with yeah. the pieces of shit. The last piece of news I have... New TV show starting for WWE called WWE Next Gen, and it follows uh, beginners in NXT or at the Performance Center. So only saw a commercial from that. Yeah, so that's it for news. News and notes. Um, and... So let's move on to the results of shows. We'll start with NXT because it's, like always, it's the first show that happens. Yeah. Uh, Roxanne Perez defeats Tatum Paxley. I actually watched... This is the first week, except for like the first uh, two or three weeks, that I actually watched every show. <clears throat> I think a couple weeks ago I did that. Um, we are recording this on Tuesday morning. Game six for the BSHL finals is tonight. No favorites uh, for me, but what I am in favor of is not going back to Dalhousie, so I'm hopeful that tonight it's over so more time can be dedicated to wrestling because especially for finals it takes up a lot of time just the driving and the getting there and uh it does yeah and even for you being in the street like you have to watch the game you have to like watch the chat you know i just have to record the game and talk you have to keep your eyes open like <laughs> I couldn't do your job, man. I I've come very uh, good at multitasking because yeah. that last game I had the chat open and I was playing. Actually, uh, I went back to Scarlet and Violet Pokemon game and I was just yeah. like, catching Pokemon and just doing little things. So like the multitasking is getting way better, which I can't wait to you know start my own streams and stuff. So. Yeah, man, with the stream deck that you have, I think it'll it'll work really well. Any uh, timeline on when that would be? Uh, it all depends on how busy I am going to be with this new job that I'm going to That's right. in three, three hours. Oh, you're going today? Yeah. Oof. Well, best of luck, man. Uh, so after the match, uh, it's announced that Valkyria versus Perez will be at the pay-per-view or premium live event, whatever they're called now. I think you go with um, Perez. Uh, they turned her heel. 
uh, it's one of the – this is the beauty about professional wrestling. When you see someone like Perez who – she it reminds me almost like Cora Jade, where it's like I can't see her as a heel. Pretty girl. Not even a pretty girl. The girl next door. You know? The just the nice girl, attractive and all that. But just like the girl next door. And all of a sudden she's this wicked heel. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Um I think they struck gold with a heel uh, Perez there. So I, I hope they, they do the switch. Uh, Valkyria was not impressed with her reign. Um, she's the one that beat Becky Lynch. Um, you know, we've talked about this before. The chase was better than the reign. Yeah. So uh, I hope they go with uh, Perez. And uh, yeah, big fan. Uh, it's continue. It, they're continuing teasing uh, Josh Briggs versus Dijak versus Oba Femi for the North American title. Yeah, Obafemi right now, I, I, I would give him a program that doesn't already have a program, if you know what I mean. I, I get what you, exactly what you mean, yeah. Um, because he, he's kind of the afterthought. He's your North American champion. Give him, he's directionless right now. He's the champion and that's it. Um, I, you know, feud him with someone. Yeah. Uh, next match, Axiom and Frazier defeat No Quarter Catch Crew to move on to the three way number one contenders match. Yeah, for the NXT tag belts, correct? Yep. Um, later on, there's another. Um, there's another uh, yep. quarterfinals or whatever it was. Um, I they're doing the same thing on SmackDown. I don't know, it's poor timing, but it is what it is. Uh, next up, we have a little segment that's Otis and Tozawa challenging Corbin and Breaker. It's announced for next week. If Otis and Tozawa win, they move on, and they're included in that tag title match thing. I don't think they win. I don't think they win either. Otis is something, someone, sorry, that they could get behind on a small program. Akira Tozawa is there to, to do jobs. Simple as that. Yeah. Uh, Akira Tozawa, and if he's happy with that, if he's getting paid well, that's fine. I can't imagine being a wrestler and being happy with being a job guy. I just, I can't. Uh, my ego is too huge for that. Um, but it is what it is. You know, some guys are, hey, I'm making this great money. I'm happy. I'm, I have all these friends, and that's great. But, you know, who would you have rather been? Val Venus or Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, I get that. But, you know, Tozawa probably makes like 60 grand a year traveling the world. Yeah. I don't know. If you want to be a wrestler, you want to be the best. You know, we've interviewed some people. And one thing is constant is I want to be the best. I want to make a living off wrestling. I want to, I, I want to be someone. I want to be someone huge in wrestling, whether it be in the Maritimes, whether it be worldwide. And I see someone like Tozawa that I know is fantastic. I've watched him since the mid-2000s. And there's just something about that that disappoints me. So next up, uh, Sol Ruka defeats Brinley Reese. Uh, something I'll mention about this match, it was a good match. And Soul Ruka's Soul Snatcher, her finishing move is yeah, that's freaking incredible. Oh, Soul Ruka is she? She has like I don't remember what it. I think she was a gymnast or something like that. Um, it, it, it's incredible. It just she is someone. There is none, and I don't think there should be. But Soul Ruka is the definition of a workhorse champion meaning a secondary belt. If they would have that in WWE, she'd be perfect for it. Yeah. Uh, they don't need another women's belt. Uh, the roster's not there yet. But, yeah, uh, Sol Ruka, big fan. Uh, next up, Drew Gulak defends the Heritage Cup against Riley Osborne. Uh, so they're going with, like, a 
free bird type thing with the heritage yeah, cup here free bird rule type thing um listen it gives them something to do the it's the no quarter catch is it yeah. that is it them and um, i think so and chase you and chase you and it gives something for the heritage cup um personally i think why don't you feud Oba Femi with the no quarter catch crew and then you unify the Heritage Cup with the North American title. You know, uh, it could even end with Charlie Dempsey winning the North American title because right now Oba Femi, I was a big fan, still am, think he's really good and all that. His reign, there's a lot of reigns in WWE right now that really aren't impressing me. Just there's there's nothing there, um, including Rhea Ripley. You know she's gonna be a year's champion. Who is R- she defending Rhea, the belt against? Rhea Ripley's title reign. The title was a, a, a second thought in that whole yep. thing with Rhea. It's unfortunate that when you become a big star and you're a female, uh, you overshadow a title. Title is the top thing that you're supposed to go after. That that's the end boss, you know. No no offense to the Rock, but you know that that's the end goal. You're winning. You know, someone asked me once, "What's the point of having a championship belt?" You know, they're not really winning it. It's something to fight for. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. If there was no championships in wrestling, what would be the point? Exactly. Um, and less is always more. Uh, we've said that a thousand times. Less is more. But you have to have that that you're fighting for. Even if you know you're not going to get it, you got to try. Yep. So next up, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defeat Hank and Tank to move on to the three-way number one contenders match for the tag titles. The OC. Um, there's something about this. Uh, we've talked about it before. They just... They, do not fit like they were on SmackDown. They have uh, Mia Mia Yim as their manager. Even that sound it looks bizarre. Like they've tried everything with them to try and make it work, and they just don't work. They just no. don't fit in WWE. Go back to Japan. Um, if it's another thing like oh we're getting paid and we're happy we're with AJ Styles and we're that's good. But I remember Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows as the IWGP tag team. Those were some of the best times for New Japan. Yeah. You know, they were a fantastic tag team. And to see them, like, wither away in WWE, it's... I don't know. It's not cool. And the main event is Trick Williams defeat defeating Noam Dar. I don't know. I, 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 I'm imagining that Trick Williams is still feuding with Carmelo uh, Hayes, yeah. Hayes, and I imagine that Noam Dar, since he's lost the Heritage Cup, is directionless once again. So, the right outcome there. And uh, next up is going to be AEW Dynamite, which I watched the first half at the locals' pub mm-hmm. uh, after watching the sep- second episode of North Pro. Uh, I was surrounded by uh, a lot of the North Pro regulars. Um, so I saw up until like halfway through the, the hook and Jericho match, which we'll get to in a second, yeah. but the first, first match was, uh, Okada winning the continental title against Eddie Kingston. Um, as he should, you're not going to have Okada lose. No. Listen, I've talked about too many belts and all that. If you insist on having these belts, then I insist you put them on big stars. Uh, Eddie Kingston's reign ends at 81 days, and if you're asking me, it's 81 days too long. Uh, I'm not a fan of Eddie Kingston. I don't see, the, I don't see it. I don't get it. Oh, he's a good promo. I don't care. He's not that great. You know, the fact that they made a goddamn belt for him because he wanted to be Toshiaki Kawada pisses me off. You got it on Okada now. Okada can hold this belt, and the Bucks will win the tag belts. Uh, it's the best thing that could happen to that continental belt. Uh, so yeah. we're going to see where it goes. 
uh, defend the belt at least. After Okada won it, Pat comes out and they've been teasing it. It's going to be a fantastic match when it happens. I'm looking forward to that match. Uh, it's a great, it's a great defense for Okada. Uh, I think that'll be saved for a pay per view. I'd have Okada defend the title a few times before the pay per view, but uh, yeah, Pack. Yeah, I'm Let's gonna, hope I'm he doesn't do get that. injured, <laughs> or a visa issue, or just wants to go back to England, or yeah. Uh, the next match is Hook defeating Jericho. Is it a um, good match? Very good match. Uh, happy that Jericho put over the young guy. Um, no, I've said it last week. I said it the week before. Probably said it the week before that. Um, you don't need that FTW belt. I think. I think in due time, it will be gone. I think Hook might try to. Hook might win another belt. Maybe maybe it's the Continental Crown. Maybe it's the International Belt. Maybe it's uh, the TNT Belt. But I think once he wins one of those belts, we're slowly going to see the TNT Belt or the FTW Belt fade away. Um, I get it. Taz, his dad. It was Taz's belt. It, it makes a good, like, you know, my kin has my belt, you know. But it's gone long in the tooth, and uh, it's unnecessary. It's unneeded. I think Hook has become a big star on his own without the belt. Um, but yeah, I think once I could see him win the international title like soon. I don't think Roderick Strong is going to be that long as champ. I, I think the undisputed kingdom is dead in the waters right now. Yeah, it's uh, not great. Uh, next match, Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa defeat Tony Storm and Mariah May. Um, I think Thunder Rosa is good enough to be a challenger. Uh, Perrazzo just lost. I don't think maybe Perrazzo feuds with Mariah May, but I think this was made for Thunder Rosa to challenge Tony Storm. Yeah. Next up, Swerve defeats the Butcher. As he should. Yeah, it's it's and all then, been it's all been confer it's all but been confirmed that it's Joe versus Swerve at the next pay per view, and the way they're heading, you know, Joe's dropping that belt. Uh, and the next match, the main event in an I Quit match, Adam Copeland defeats Christian Cage and becomes the new TNT champion. Um, Edge came out decked out in blue and white. Like his precious Toronto Maple Leafs. They have the uh, spot where he put a Boston Bruins shirt on on a Christian, and he put a Leafs jersey, and they had basically like a hockey fight. Um, in the penalty box. In the penalty box. Um, didn't think Copeland would turn heel here, but you know he certainly did. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, so that's it for Dynamite. Uh, for those of you who watch Dynamite, Rampage is right after. Yeah. Uh, the first match was Best Friends defeating the Don Callis family. Good match. I wa I, I was surprised to see it right after. Um, because I thought it was like Dynamite was continuing, and when I looked on the channel, I'm like, okay, it's Rampage. I never get to watch Rampage, so I might as well watch Rampage. Um. I think I enjoyed Rampage more than Dynamite. Uh, for the best friends winning, they also win that wild card spot yeah. and move on into the uh, tag title tournament. Yeah. Um, I still say the Bucks take that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shibata defeats Kevin Matthews. Katsuyori Shibata. Um, big fan of his. Um Another guy that he's there because New Japan won't touch him because of the brain injury. Uh, he's completely healed. He's signed with AEW now. I think he's under the Ring of Honor branch more, though. I don't know, man. I, I, I kind of like to see him as the Ring of Honor world champion. Uh, next up, Takeshita defeats Rocky Romero. 
Uh, as he should. Uh, Rocky Romero um, stole Thad Howard's gimmick. <laughs> And then in the main event of Rampage, Julia Hart and Sky Blue defeat Willow, Nightingale, and Chris Statlander. Best match that night. Agreed. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, um, um, not Willow, but her partner. How come I can't remember her name? Statlander. Statlander. Took a wicked bump into some thumbtacks. Um, Julia Hart and Sky Blue both have improved by a country mile. Just they're really, especially Julia Hart. Um, they did a spot where Julia stabbed Sky Blue, Sky Blue in the head with a screwdriver. And uh, so clearly Sky Blue went and got some color. But it's like she just like was afraid or whatever. You could see there was a little bit of blood, no trickling, nothing. Uh, the old, <laughs> the old, I might get in trouble for this one. The old rule back in the days, if you're going to get color, uh, take a few aspirins before. It thins the blood and it like makes a crimson mask. Um, but she just gigged herself and there was a little bit of blood, but it was like not dripping, nothing. It was just there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so usually we don't mention Ring of Honor um, this <laughs> week. Uh, I, I watched Ring of Honor. Uh, there was a very special moment for us uh, Maritime Wrestling fans, which we'll get to here in a second. But uh, first match, Billy Starks defeats Mercedes Martinez to move on to the finals for the Ring of Honor TV Women's Championship. I, I think that belt's tailor-made for Billy Starks. Um you know, I think th this title will work for her and nobody else. Really? Because I think I actually, I don't know. I could see the person that won the next match actually might be able to win it too. Which uh, is? The next match, Queen Aminata defeats Red Velvet and moves so, on to the finals. The way I could see this, I could see Queen Aminata win and Billy Starks chase it. But I think the end result is Billy Starks as the TV champion eventually. Yes. I think the yeah, you're right there. The, the end result is that I think, obviously, until the match happens, we can still speculate and guess what's going to happen. But, you know, it's one of those things, uh, an old wrestling promoter that I, that I used to be friends with used to tell me, if you can program something and you can, if you have an idea... And you can take that idea and put it here, but still have something all the way here. Do it, and that's that would be one of it. You made that belt for Billy Stark, but you have Queen Aminata as a champion. So you think that Stark's going to win, but then Aminata wins it, and then you got this long program that ends with Billy Stark as the champion. You got what six months worth of TV right there. Yeah, it's just smart thinking right there. So next match, Lee Johnson defeats Landon Lightning. The names is just one of, keep on. Yeah, it's um, another local talent. Uh, and then next segment, we start off with uh, Johnny Honor and Taya Valkyrie beginning promo uh, Dalton Castle <laughs> comes in. He rolls underneath the big plastic thing. It's and then so he, funny. He complains to uh, the interview lady that uh, Johnny Honor got rid of his boys. And she's like, yeah, but you have boys right there. And then the camera goes and there's four guys. Uh, and like I said, this is special to us because our, our local talent from here, from Fredericton here, uh, Hollywood Cole is one of Dalton Castle's boys. Yeah, uh, Hollywood Cole, if you've never seen him, he, there's plenty of matches of him on YouTube check him out he's he's one of my personal favorites here in the maritimes uh dalton castle here is hilarious he's like where are my boys and johnny knight uh johnny honor uh, johnny honor yeah he's like we lost them he's like how do you lose my boys <laughs> and he's like they're boys there ah uh, those are just backup boys yeah they're the boys that you use once and then you get rid of um 
I don't know. This storyline, it it's a reason. I, I saw this segment, and uh, I saw the a few things. But uh, those are things that would make me, like, watch Ring of Honor. Dalton Castle has been hilarious with this storyline. Uh, Johnny Honor, we know he's great. He's got Ty Valkyrie with him. Um, I don't know. Uh, big congratulations to Hollywood Cole. Uh, getting a big shot with uh, Ring of Honor like this. Um, it, it's always fun to see one of our guys go and rock it in the big promotion, proving that maritime wrestling is, is no joke. You know, we got we got a hell of a great crop of guys and girls here. Yeah. Uh, something else too. Uh, I don't know if it was a dark match or it's going to be like next week's Ring of Honor show. Uh, Hollywood Cole actually makes an entrance with Dalton Castle because he yeah. shared the picture of him in the ring. So I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, now, nah, man, Hollywood Cole, uh, one of my favorites. Like I said, him, Charlie Hubley, Nick Strong. They are legit. The stable legit here in the Maritimes. If you've never seen these guys. They're hilarious. Hilarious, and they're not goofballs. They're good. Yeah, like They're really good wrestlers. Uh, decorated champions here in the Maritimes. Right now, Nick Strong and his brother Matt are one half of the NBWA Tag Team Champions. Um, Hollywood Cole, he's the UCW Atlantic Canadian Champion. And Charlie Hubley, he's the uh, ECPW Heavyweight Champion. That's Atl- uh, East Coast Pro Wrestling. So. Yep. Next match, Hikaru Shida defeats Rachel Ellering. Hikaru Shida might be one of my favorites. She's so underrated right now. Um, Three-time uh, or two-time women's champion in AEW. I don't know. It's the former champion that has nothing to do when she's relegated to Ring of Honor. I think they could find a better place for her. And then in the main event, Matt Seidel defeats TJ Crawford. Oh, no, that was not the main event, actually. That's what I Sorry. thought. That was a bizarre main event. Uh, the main event is Mina Shirakawa defeating Anna J. So I'm not familiar with Mina, but... She looked to be like a huge star. Okay. So Japanese girl, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I should go back and watch this Ring of Honor. Just I, I saw the Hollywood Cole segment, but uh, just uh, to see... I don't know, Ring of Honor... Is Ring of Honor doing better than AEW right now as far as storylines and all that? Because... That Dalton Castle Johnny Honor program has been going on for a while, and it just seems to be getting better. Yeah, it's been going on for months, but it hasn't become stale yet. Yeah, and that's hard. That is so hard, and they've they've managed to keep it going and keep it fresh. Uh, and props to both guys for being funny. Like seeing Dalton Castle roll out from under that little thing, and like, where's my boys? Where's my boys? <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, now we're moving on to TNA. Uh, in the first match, Jake Something defeats Leon Slater, Chris Bay, Allen Angels, Jason Hotch, Kevin Knight to become the number one contender for the X Division title. I think that makes a great uh, title defense for Ali. Uh, Mustafa Ali, I think he's not losing that belt anytime soon. Um... He's doing. I I think he's going to be remembered as. You know how wrestlers, CM Punk's remembered for the WWE title, uh, uh, Stone Cold WWF title, and then you got guys like uh, Razor Ramon. He's remembered for the Intercontinental title. I think Mustafa Ali is going to be remembered for that X Division title. I think yeah. he's going to make that title relevant again. I know it sounds maybe mean, but. I, I think that's what's going to happen. Next match, the Time Splitters, which is uh, Alex Shelley and Kushida, defeat the Grizzled Young Vets. I saw this match on the little, like, I'm, I'm telling you, TNA, they make it so easy to, like, follow it now. 
because every week they put out a 15, 17 minute, like abridged version of the show. Yep. And they'll have the end of the, the important matches and all that. Um, and I watched that. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you mentioned this last week, but Killer Kelly is also gone from TNA. I so, don't think I did, no. So she was teaming with Masha Slamovich. Um, I've been watching a lot of Game Changer Wrestling lately, and Masha is huge there. Former world champion there. Uh, Dan Housen's there. Uh, Dan Housen teamed up with Nick Gage um, on Sunday to face uh, Violence is Forever for the tag titles unsuccessfully. But, you know, to see what Dan Housen is in Game Changer Wrestling and to see what he is in AEW, Dan Housen's actually a creepy, like, they, they make it work really well where he's not just this comedy goofball. Uh, next match, Crazy Steve defends his Digital Media Championship against PCO. And uh, PCO loses because we get a distraction by Khan. So they're going to keep that going. And they had a match, right? They, they Or they brawled or whatever. They PC Yeah, they brawled. PCO keeps taking these stupid bumps. Yeah, I actually have the note written of PCO going spine first into the four, yeah. the top of the four chairs. The, the chairs are back to back and he lands... It's like that Adam Cole spot in one of those NXTs where he landed like spine first right on the ridges of the chair. Um, Adam Cole is younger than PCO. PCO, he has to be close to 60 now. And he's taking spots like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's willing to die in the ring. I, I, I don't know. Him and Darby Allen should be a tag team. He is 56 years old. That's close to 60. Yeah. Uh, next match, Ash by Elegance defeats Silesia Spark. Uh, yeah, Ash is the one they're pushing. So she has a great looking uh, swan don. Uh, something yeah. I admit. Yeah. Um, Dana Brooke in the WWE was never someone that they pushed. Um, Is she tailor-made for a smaller promotion like this? It seems like it is. It is, yeah. Uh, next, we get Moose versus Nick Nemeth announced for the pay-per-view. Yeah, uh, I don't see Nemeth winning it, but stranger things have happened. I got a buddy yeah, of mine that's, that's like guaranteed. He's like, nope, Nemeth is taking it. Like I don't know, man. It's like I I guarantee you. All right, wait and see. Nemeth is gonna is gonna take it eventually. I, I don't think it's this soon though. Well, you will have to wait and see. I don't. Are, I, you, like... are you the buddy I'm talking about? No. <laughs> uh, in the main event, uh, Jordan Grace defeats Tasha Steeles. Um, I I would have done the switch and put Zaya Brookside as the champion. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Jordan Grace. She's all right. <laughs> uh, so we're moving on to SmackDown. SmackDown starts off with Santos Escobar defeating Rey Mysterio after Dirty Dom interferes. So this is one of the things that people are, where is this going? Here's my thought on it. Dom, I, I think Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio happens at WrestleMania, but in a tag match. And I think it's going to be Escobar and Dominic versus people are saying it's going to be Rey Mysterio and Carlito. No. People are saying also that it could be Dragon Lee. No. Read between the lines. Who are they trying to get into the Judgment Day? Yeah, I... um. I think Dom interfering here uh, more so just keeps the storyline of the Judgment Day splitting up and Dom. No, but who are they to... trying to? Who are they trying to get into the Judgment Day? Get into the Judgment Day. Andrade. I think it's Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos Escobar and Dami and uh, Dominic Mysterio Makes at sense. WrestleMania. 
I think Andrade, he's teasing it, but he ain't going to the Judgment Day. He's got a wicked new finishing move. He's got like this butterfly suplex twisting move. I don't know. Andrade is a good wrestler. He is, yeah. Uh, next up. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller defeat the OC to move closer to being in that six-pack challenge at Mania. Uh, makes sense. The OC... Uh... They're on NXT right now, so... Yeah, so... Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. I think I think Grayson Waller is held back by uh, Theory. I think he's stuck in that tag team. And uh, he's not moving right now the worst thing to happen is being stuck in mud yeah uh next match eo sky defeats naomi yeah people are gonna complain because uh naomi's a former knockouts champion it's like no uh it's the right thing to do storyline uh damage control was there and i think eo eo attacked bailey right uh, before so, the match, yes. So you have uh, Dakota, Asuka, and um, Kyrie come out. And they're just there, and they're, like, dancing on the stage. Like, it got awkward at one point where I'm like, this is dragging. This is dragging on very long. And you just see Kyrie. She's sort of, like, going back and forth dancing and all that. I'm like, they're clearly supposed to cut back. Are they not ready or something? There's EO attacking Bailey, and it's like, geez, that was a waste of 30 seconds right there. I think the build up to this is obviously Bailey taking the title from EO, and we're going to have a six woman tag match at Mania. That's going to be Dakota Kai and the Kabuki Warriors facing off against Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill. Yeah, absolutely. Because <clears throat> Cargill is set to debut next week's SmackDown, and, you know, is she ready? I don't know if she's really having that much trouble remembering spots and stuff. It's the she was thought. very, she was very well hidden in while Rumble, still being right? out there on no on, in any in AW. Yeah. Um. The original thought was she's gonna go. Triple H even said as much. She's gonna go to NXT. She's gonna learn. She did the Royal Rumble thing. She got a big pop. She lifted Nia Jax on her shoulders and all that, and that's all well and good. But you shot yourself in the foot. She's been in the Rumble. This yeah. is your new acquisition and all that, so now you, now she can't go to NXT. Uh, they did the same thing with Maxine Dupree. And, you know, I'm hearing that she's, like, super disappointed that the fans have turned against her. It's not her fault. You know? I, I can tell you right now I'm going to go out and I'm going to drive a, a, an 18-wheeler. I've never driven an 18-wheeler, so am I going to probably fuck up? Absolutely. I've never done it. If you start in the wrestling business and they they throw you out there, you know, you hear these old stories about these uh, back in the diva days where they'd just be like, all right, you're going to have a match. I never wrestled. I never trained to wrestle. I don't know what to do. Oh, no, no, you'll do fine. Yeah. So, you know, at Cargill, you know, this is not a her problem. This is a WWE problem. You shot yourself in the foot. You you exposed her immediately. You put her in the rumble because you wanted to get one over AEW, and she's not ready. Uh, has she been training with guys like Shawn Michaels, and is she better? Maybe. Uh, putting her in a six-man like this, though, if she does it and then she goes to NXT and it's a one-off, She's hidden well with five fantastic talents. So if they do the match and then all of a sudden she gets the hot tag and she goes wild and hits her finish and gets the win, that's fine. It's fine for her, not the others, though, because she's new. She's, you know, it's wrestling can be weird like that sometimes. Yeah. And then in our main event, the Street Profits defeat Authors of Pain. And I believe this was to move on to face against uh, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory seem to be uh, 
the obvious choice because I think the authors of Pain are going to cause the profits the match or Street Profits, yeah. And then that's it uh, for SmackDown, and then we just have Raw left. Uh, Raw starts off with Cody Rhodes promo, his usual spiel. It goes on like 15 minutes. Uh, the Rock comes out, whispers something to Cody, and just leaves. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, the Rock got a huge pop, though. Um, first match, Ricochet defeats JD McDonough. I was a little surprised at that. Uh, I, I, I don't know this little spike for Ricochet lately because this, he's had a few wins. He has, yeah. Uh, next up, we get CM Punk in the ring starting the promo. Drew McIntyre comes out. They go against each other for a little bit. And then Seth Rollins comes out. Uh, it's been teased that Punk might be the referee, but I believe he's just going to be on commentary. He, he's probably going to cost... Commentary. He's probably going to cost one of the guys the match, or we'll have to wait and see on that. Well, it's we, funny. We, we will be making a predictions video, so we'll yeah. go into further details and stuff. What's funny is he had this sick burn on Seth Rollins where he's like, it's funny how you're taller than me now with those lifts in your boots. <laughs> so, and then they go face to face and Rollins is like this much taller than CM Punk. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Punk <laughs> nailing it right on the head there. <laughs> uh, next match, Candice LeRae defeats Ivy Nile, continuing her heel turn because she stacked her up and put yeah. her feet on the rope to get the pin and indy hartwell is uh she's like conflicted here she's like oh god i don't like this but she's like oh, this is like and candace is my my girl she's my mentor so yeah. uh i'm enjoying it uh diy versus the new day becomes a no contest judgment day gets involved our truth comes out. Well, was out. Miz comes out with that too. So they just start brawling and. Our uh, truth had a Chicago White Sox belt. They've been doing these custom sports belts, and he had like every. I noticed every show they have a new belt, like for whatever city they're in. They're like, ah, here's my belt, you know. Well, they sell them, yeah. Yeah. Um, so apparently they're going to do hot or they did hockey ones. I don't remember. Uh, someone asked me if I was going to get the Montreal belt. And I'm like, probably not. Um, I don't think they did hockey ones yet. They did football. They, they did football. They clearly did uh, baseball. Uh, I think that their plan is to do the hockey ones too. Um, I have no plans right now in buying any championship belts. I got one there. One on my bed, one in front of my TV, and one down in front of my fireplace. So, you know, room is a is a big thing here, and another belt uh, just not gonna happen. I have my one belt right there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it was made for the channel. So, it, Joel had a, and I had to do some research on this because this is way back when. Joel had the undisputed belt, and this belt was massive. When I say yeah, this I belt, had, was, I had the version two. Version two. So this belt was massive, and the first time I ever saw it, I'm like, "That is way bigger than what you see on TV." He's like, "No, no, that's what it is." So the story there is, the version two was the Rock's belt, and the Rock had this massive belt because he didn't wear it. He just like hold it, and it was like huge. So the version two was actually cut down. So they took some snaps off, and they took uh, one of the plates off, just so it would fit Brock Lesnar's uh, waist because it was that big. Mm. And it was a massive, a beautiful belt, though. Uh, you sold that one, right? Yeah, I, uh, I, I almost, I kind of regret selling it, but at the time I needed money, and I wasn't enjoying it, so. It wasn't it at your parents uh, for for a long time. Like it wasn't even with you. Yeah, it was in store. Like when I moved from my house to an apartment, I put like ninety percent of my stuff in storage. Yeah, I remember I was parading around with a child size winged eagle belt. That's the one that's in front of my TV, and Joel had this monstrosity <laughs> of a belt. 
<laughs> and it was like night and day. It was hilarious. Uh, next match, Andrade beats Giovanni Vinci. As he should. Yeah. Uh, after this, we get a Becky and Rhea promo. Uh, Rhea made the news this week for her stink face to Nia Jax. And <laughs> then Buddy Matthew saying a weekly occurrence for me. Um, too much information made me laugh. Uh, it made me laugh too. Uh, next match, Bronson Reed defeats Sami Zayn when Gunther provides the distraction. Not a fan of Zayn losing. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking. I'm kind of thinking they're adding Chad Gable because they've continued the storyline. They Chad have, yeah. Gable. I talked with a guy at the last hockey game, and I don't think we could agree on anything. Not not in a malicious way, but. You know, I don't think Sami Zayn needs this intercontinental belt. I think he's bigger than that belt, and I think he he doesn't need to be the guy that beats Gunther. I think that would be a perfect spot for Chad Gable. I think if they add Chad Gable to the triple threat match, Chad Gable's winning, Sami Zayn's taking the pin. You keep Gunther strong by him not losing. It... it it sours his uh, win because you need to beat Gunther. Um, the win's going to get soured no matter what because it's going to be in a triple threat. To me, he... Gunther should 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 lose the title in a one on one. Have yeah. someone beat him clean. Yeah. Have him fight tooth and nail to get that win. That's like, how you um, end it. Like the Ilya Dragunov match, where I think it was like match of the year. And yeah. it was just like these stiff shot. But not everybody's going to take punishment like Ilya Dragunov. Dragunov is a beast, you know, that's Dude. willing. He kind of reminds me of Chris Colt, uh, where it's like, just lay it in me. You know, hit me as hard as you can. I can take it, you know, so. Uh, and in the main event, Jey Uso defeats Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Solo and Jimmy come out. Cody and Seth come out. And they start all start brawling outside the ring, and then Jay gets the win. Yeah, um, Jay used the spear as a finisher. Yep. So I don't know. I think he has a better spear than Roman. A lot of people don't like Ro Roman's spear. Yeah, I, I don't hate it. I think Roman has a cool. I didn't like Edge's spear because Edge. I get the neck thing. But Edge, he would just like run and like uh, just be a little tackle. Roman yeah, it's like ropes himself. Yeah, Roman like dives into yeah, his exactly. Um, which is the way Jay uh, Uso is doing it too. Uh, Edge, he would just like spear drop to his do knee. this. Yeah. Uh, whereas Roman, he like die. Roman, you know what? Really didn't want to mention him this episode, but I have to now. It reminds me of Ultimate Warrior's flying tackle, where Ultimate Warrior would bounce off the rope, and right off the ropes, he'd already be in the air. Like, just like, good luck, everybody. Roman, it's like the same thing. Edge would be run, 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 spear. Where Roman, it's like ropes, jump spear. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and you I, already mentioned Warrior at the start, so... Did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. I really don't. And then uh, after the main event match, uh, we get a backstage, not really a brawl, just The I'm Rock just destroying Cody Rhodes, uh, busting they got, him open. They got color, and uh, he kept hitting him on the American Nightmare bus, bus yeah. which uh, Pharaoh's picture was on, and Kept I had, saying, I, Mama I, I, Rhodes. I, I, yeah, I keep. I kept laughing. Mama Rhodes, look at this. Mama Rhodes, this is Cody's blood on your belt. Mama Rhodes. Uh, it grossed me out when he like smeared the blood on his hand to like put it. Like, I'm a germaphobe, so. Yeah, you you are. Yeah. So I need it. So. So yeah, that's uh, this episode. That is this episode. We're all done for today. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll probably make a 
predictions video for WrestleMania. Uh, we'll probably wait closer to WrestleMania to make it. Probably release it uh, next Friday because that would be the day before the WrestleManias happen. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably now that hockey is going to be done this week because at the latest it's going to be done either Wednesday. T today or tomorrow. Or, tomorrow. or or yesterday or today. <laughs> yeah, depending on how it works out, yeah. Um, we're going to be... We can do predictions videos for the next AWP review. We can do yeah. predictions for the TNA ones. Like, We'll have more free time, especially... And then... It's going to be nice. Uh, it's uh, The weekends are going to be uh, open because uh, senior hockey, it's very much a weekend thing uh it's during the week now they're just trying to finish it there was a big fucking possibility the game would be postponed because there is freezing rain uh Today, for up yeah. north i think we're gonna be fine um because um if from it's anything I... like saturday's snowstorm you guys yeah. will be fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh from what i'm hearing uh, the dalhousie players are going to be spending the night in Miramichi, and um, they might be partying in Miramichi because the Dalhousie Marauders could walk away tonight, the new BSHL champions. It's very possible if they start off the first 10 minutes like they did last game, it's it's over. You Ten. might as well not even... It was five goals in less than five minutes. Yeah, if, if you start off like that again, you call it there, it's a done and done thing. and. I Again, I'm not picking favorites. I hope Dalhousie wins. Not because I want Dalhousie to win. Uh, I like both teams. I, I'm tired. I'm very tired. The car rides, the miles are just really getting to us. Um, we had like a 15-minute laughing fit in the car because we're so tired. I just want them to be over. And unfortunately, that it, being over today means the river valley loss and uh i'm willing to take that risk um to me uh minus the two first games in this playoff series uh i had Dalzi dalhousie winning i picked dalhousie winning within their first like eight or nine games in the the regular season they've just been the most dominant team this year uh, River Valley had their number the first two games of the of the playoff series, but ever since then, Dalhousie's been the strongest team. They they found a way in the first two games to shut off Pascal Valcour, which is co MVP winner with Peter Trainer of the Lumberjacks. Um, I don't know what they can do, but it's like I said, I I, I don't care who wins. I just care that I don't want to go back to Dalhousie. Um, that ride is brutal. And it's funny because it's the promotion, not the promotion, but the the team, the organization that's treated us the best. Uh, management, fans, players, um, they've just treated us It's also us probably the because they, kn they knew that you guys were coming from far away too. Now, for, since, we, since Corey started the podcast, uh, the most support we've had was from Dalhousie. Uh, not even the teams from our own backyards have treated us this good. So Yeah, it's definitely good to see that, you know, um, the teams and the lead, well, the teams have supported the podcast a lot. and Each team has supported us in one way or another, whether it be one player, whether it be two players, whether it be management and all that. But right now, right now, I'm ready for it to be over. Um, I'll be looking forward to the next season, but I'm looking forward to having my weekend to myself. I'm looking forward to recording more wrestling stuff. I'm looking forward to go see some wrestling shows. Um, we saw North Pro. i not imposed to go into a CCW show or uh, anything like because I... I Right now, I'm ta I'm hockeyed out. For the time yeah. being, I am hockeyed out. I want to see the cup on the ice tonight in Doketown. Again, not well, because... They, they might open up the game and have the cup there. Probably. Um, we saw that cup once 
uh, Edward Shabuktu and the Hawks won it. Um, I, I, I'm just re I'm t I'm tired right now. Yep, that's the one right there. <laughs> uh, I got that picture there, and I got a Dalhousie Marauders uh, little towel. So my goal was, and my goal for next year is to have that wall have a piece of merchandise from each team. Um, the framed picture was a gift from Corey. Her, yeah. Yeah, it was a gift from Corey, and then I printed off yes. the pictures of all of us. Yeah. Uh, the Marauders towel is something they were giving out at the door. Um, so I'd like to have something from, you know, the other teams to fill out the wall. Um, next year, right now, it's when I decided to do that, you know, we we're already in the the second round of the playoffs where half the teams were gone. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. we've rambled on enough. Peace out, everyone. Take care.